Come on, Jagger. Oh, come here, boy. <laughs> Sit. Um, so, hello, my name is Tatiana. I do pet photography. Um, I mainly operate uh, within Chepstow, and today we're in the Forest of Dean, near Tuts Hill, with my um, German Shepherd, Jagger. Jagger. Um, he is a two-year-old boy. I've got another dog at home, Luna. She's also a German Shepherd, but she's a bit too cheeky, so she's not here with us today. The way I got into pet photography is because of my two dogs. Uh, I really love taking pictures of them and I started upgrading my skills, learning. I got really into it, especially post-processing and going on all different walks with them. Always wanted to capture a moment of them um, somewhere in a nice setting and it escalated to the point where I just got obsessive with taking pictures of my own dogs. Eventually, as my skills progressed, I started uh, having inquiries from social media whether I get paid shoots, I do paid shoots uh, and that kind of started me wondering like should I? <laughs> uh, and it all went from there I would say. Um, I did my own website, um, I set up a little Facebook group and um, I didn't really push and advertise, I kind of let the clients come to me to start with uh, just to expand my portfolio. I didn't really charge much it was just like a t test run just to see how many clients I get how much interest I get the first people that contacted me they were actually following my uh, dog page initially and because although it was my dog Instagram page I still was posting a load of pictures retouched pictures so some of them would ask me for advice and I'd give them advice some of them would just say they like my photos and uh, by the way do you do paid photos so um, I kind of thought about it and said okay, I'll, I'll do a shoot for you. Um, and it, funnily enough, as you'd imagine, my first two photo shoots were German Shepherds <laughs> because the page was about German Shepherds. Um, and I think for a while, actually, it was German Shepherds because all I'd post is German Shepherds and the hashtags are German Shepherds. Eventually, I did start getting other breeds and I also asked a few people that I know if I could take photos of their little dogs, like a Jack Russell, my friend had, just so I could spice up my portfolio a bit and let people know it's not just German Shepherds, it's not German Shepherd photography, <laughs> it is pet photography in general. I did do photography in the past, just not pet photography, and it was really different to what I do now. It was mainly like black and white portraits. So when I started pet photography, it was, to be fair, like starting from scratch. It was just complete minefield. And what I did is I'd find some photographers that I really like for inspiration and think that's where I want to be. And then I'd start just YouTubing anything I could possibly um, can to improve my skills. So tips on pet photography, tips on editing. Um, and there isn't much information on editing pets on YouTube but at the end of the day the process is still the same so how to blur a background, how to remove hair, how to mask, how it is so much information out there and if you're willing to put the time in that's how I did it. I would just spend countless hours uh, on YouTube with a Photoshop open to the side and copy whatever tutorial I'm doing because if you watch something and then want to do it, you'll forget it. So the best bet is do it as you see it and repeat, repeat, repeat until you get better. And eventually you will develop your own style, something that you like. When I started to realize like I am getting a style is when I noticed that all my photos are kind of having the same vibe. I would describe it as just moody, like greens, blues. Those are my favorite colors, cyan is, one of my favorite tones to use in any photo. I know some people might find it's a bit too dark, but that's just how I like it. Um, and that's when I noticed that I'm not even intentionally trying to do it. It just naturally so happens that every photo is moody. And I do like a punch of color. Initially, I was a bit self-conscious with color. I wasn't sure exactly how to work with it because I haven't got any art background. So everything is just self-taught. Um, so I would desaturate colours a lot or like just be afraid of them basically. And then as I understood a bit more about retouching, about colour, I really like to just put a punch of blue or green <laughs> into my photo. And I think that's how 
just my style naturally developed. It might change in the future. And I would say in inspiration comes from, from everywhere. I do a bit of landscape photography as well. That's just a hobby. But I follow a lot of amazing landscape photographers just for inspiration on like colour and mood and um, just editing techniques perhaps that you can actually apply to pet photography. So um, just think outside the box a bit, <laughs> I would say. And um, yeah, don't be afraid to make errors because we all learn. If you look at my photography in like June 2020, you'd get a twitchy eye. <laughs> it was so horrible, blown highlights, no composition. I was trying to almost use the same techniques I used to use when I did portrait photography but I don't think it actually works quite as well. And um, when I realized that, <coughs> I started archiving those <laughs> old posts <laughs> to not spook people and um, um, yeah, not spook clients away <laughs> with my horrible photography. <laughs> Whenever I do any photo shoot, whether it's a client photo shoot or whether I'm just out with my dogs taking a couple of pictures, I always pick out the best photos for social media at least um, because what everybody doesn't realise is that whatever you see on social media is the best work. It doesn't mean that every image is like that. I'm not saying they're bad, but you would pick whatever is the best in your book to uh, attract clients potentially. And um, normally I would take, within the first hour, I would take enough images to retouch about 10 at least. And I try to make them different, so they're not all next to a tree or on a stump. I try to vary the location and I do a bit, a bit of action photography because it's, I think, quite cool for a client to have their dog just completely loose, running wild, showing their true character and they're really like alive images. Um, normally, if I'm just out with my dogs, I don't take them on a photo shoot, I take them on a dog walk. So I might take like four photos and edit one if I really like it. I stick to my safe locations and angles as well as try and experiment a bit i don't want all my photos to be one after another just a, a picture of a dog w with some woodland in the background so i try to look for uh, foggy mornings to give a bit of more like a moody feel as I, as I say i really like moody photographs um, i try to take photos of them in the landscapes as i say for me this is still learning but i really really love it um, I try urban photography of my own dogs as well and think outside the box when I can. Uh, although it might not look like in my feet. <laughs> They're all green and, <laughs> and blue. <laughs> dogs have short attention span. They're outside. There's lots of smells. You are not exciting with your camera. So make sure you're ready before you ask to do them anything. And when you are ready, make it quick. So ask them to sit and be ready to shoot. Um, preferably the owner uh, should do the work for you and you're just ready to shoot. Have treats to hand, high value treats, something that is really tasty. They're not gonna be listening to you for piece of kibble. Make sure it's a meaty treat or their favorite toy. Um, a squeaky toy is a good shout. Or if you can make very stupid noises <laughs> for them to look at you because they will and that might be your best shot. So that's how I normally do it. I always get ready before I do anything. Then I ask them one command. I reward them when they are in position before I even took a photo. Then I take the photo and I reward them again so that they come back to you for more rather than be really bored, walk away, not interested, no rewards. Um, so yeah, reward your uh, models very heavily. A small dog is easier to manage, even if it's a bit mischievous, you can just stick a lead on them. Whereas a big dog is a bit stronger, <laughs> obviously that is a challenge. And secondly, with little dogs, I find any location is a good location. They are so easy to photograph. I'm not saying generally it's easy, but from my experience, taking photos of big dogs and small dogs, uh, for big dogs it's a bit harder to find a um, good location. Whereas little dogs, they fit anywhere, any stump, any bush, any, <laughs> any tree, they will look amazing. Um, but other than that, at the end of the day, they're all dogs and they're the same species. So patience is a virtue. The longer you are with a dog out, it goes both ways. The, the more they get fed up at stopping <laughs> and, and doing something for you. But at the same time, because it's just a dog walk, practically, 
they get more tired. So they sometimes get more compliant with you. So it depends what dog you have. If you have like a Belgian Malinois, probably not. But if you have a little Jack Russell, they may well actually be better behaved after about half an hour once they've sniffed everything around, had their zooming <laughs> and they will start listening. So it really depends on the dog that you have. I normally let the dog sniff me, my camera, my gear. So we kind of introduce to each other and then I don't start shooting immediately I let them walk for five to ten minutes just walk around sniff and relax their mind before I start shooting um, because if you let them relax and um, let them to get to know <laughs> their surroundings they'll be a lot more relaxed and uh, obedient when you do want to do something just remember that your model the, the, the pet is your first priority so you make sure they're comfortable they're not stressed they're not anxious um, don't like keep them still in one position for too long if they start whining and wanting to go away just let them be let them run around just for five minutes and then get back to it again um, reward them heavily as I say um, although your dog might be amazingly trained I think it is important to pay them for what they're doing for you at the end of the day because they haven't subscribed to a photo shoot. <laughs> They've subscribed to a dog walk. So make sure you have really tasty treats on you or a really um, like squeaky or favorite toy for the dog and make sure it's fun for them and the owner because if the dog starts just whining, crying, pulling, you're not going to get any good photos. That's just as simple as that. So um, make sure that is literally a couple of minutes you're shooting and then you're letting them be and then you're shooting and then you're letting them be so it's a bit of balance like don't abuse your dogs <laughs> i really love a bit of a, like natural um feel in a dog so if they find a squirrel and they look up i find that's great i would any day prefer a dog looking away than look dog looking in the camera because that just gives you um like transports you to what the dog is doing. So he's, he's, he's seeing a squirrel and, and his true emotion is really, uh, like the ears are up um, and he's really engaged and I love that. A dog lying in the, in the woodland on moss, especially if it's a bit wet and you can see little droplets on it, is really nice. Um, normally I also look for nice framing. So um, if we are in the woodlands, I always make sure that there is no weird trees sticking out of dogs' heads. <laughs> That's the last thing you want. So I make sure that there is enough space between the dog and the background to make it um, a nice compression uh, between your subject and your background. As well as um, if you have lots of trees, it's always nice to have like a tree either side of the picture because it gives you that nice frame. Um, another thing that I'd recommend is fern. It's great. <laughs> Because especially for big dogs, fern is great. If you have a little dog, you could, in just the grass, make a nice frame and they'll be just really eye-pleasing, beautiful, easy to edit. Whereas with big dogs, you have to look for taller grass. And I would say fern is that taller grass. Because again, it gives you a nice frame, foreground. In the background, you'll have your nice compressed uh, trees um, and bokeh, if you're into it. If not, obviously just trees. Um, and yeah, it's just good framing for you and make the photo more interesting rather than just flat. The most important thing with pet photography, uh, like pro tip, get eyes in focus because if you have a um, narrow aperture, their snoot is about 10 centimetres away from their eyes. So quite often I see people who start out, they'd have a snoot in focus but not the eyes and that's just completely, is a wasted image because eyes is the reflection of your soul, whatever the phrase goes. <laughs> English is not my first language, but get the eyes in focus because that's your main focal point. That's what gets the image, the mood. And um, the way to do it is to focus on the eye, choose a small spot, focus on your camera and focus on their eyes. You can have both the nose and, <laughs> and the eyes in focus, which is fine brilliant if you can do that but if you don't get the eyes in focus you you kind of may as well just discard the image and second get on the level with your dog 
So don't shoot them from like above, like you would with a human, because human, you are on a level with their eyes. Whereas with the dog, if you do that, they're always kind of looking up. Um, I'm not saying there isn't a place for that angle, but generally the images are more striking and more impactful if the dog is on a level with your camera and looks in the camera. Um, because the pet is the focal point of photography. So you, you want to get all the, the best angles <laughs> to make um, a great image. In post-processing, Oh, that's that. That's where the main, uh, the main magic and the main um, workload happens because it could take anything between half an hour to two hours to edit one photo. If I take a really great picture that I'm just so happy with, I can't wait to edit it. And I could spend like sometimes I spend a day. I'm not even joking. I'll edit it and I'll leave it. And I'll come back to it and it'll be like five hours later. I'm still on the same picture. Um, I, I don't think I have like a preference of what dog to edit or what location to edit, but I do love um, stunning landscapes and dogs in the landscapes. Um, and it is something that I'm actually still learning. Like I can edit it, but I, I really want to improve and I'm still improving. I think like in anything, you can always get better, no matter how good you are. Right, um, so this is my uh, pet photography bag, <laughs> shall we call it. Um, I'll start with what's outside in, in, in the pockets, essentials. So here we have a um, collapsible water bowl for the dogs, of course, <laughs> as well as a water bowl, because the dogs quite often get really hot. Like, he, you could tell he wants some water, I'll give it to him in a minute. Um, yeah, so... One sec, sorry about that. <laughs> Here you go, Jagger. So now I have a um, squeaky toy for the dogs who prefer a toy catch. Um, and they have some poo bags and poo, actual poo, <laughs> because the dog <laughs> has been to his business. Um, right, and uh, now we open up the bag. Jaguar, give it to me. Come here. <laughs> Jaguar. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, put that way. Um, right, in the bag, I have a little air blower, a few just cleaning bits and bobs, just in case if um, my camera falls in the mud or whatever. A little brush. So that's that. Then I have another pocket where I have just some napkins in case, again, uh, the camera gets dirty, um, Jagger gets dirty, <laughs> or if I need to clean my hands and not dirt my camera. I've got a little lens spray. Uh, my camera cap and that's it really so essentially I've just got a few cleaning bits and bobs just in case if my camera gets dirty then I have to be fair I never use this but I do have it um, a little grey card this is to set your white balance when you're shooting it is really helpful but because my dogs are mainly black and white and grey <laughs> I kind of do it in oh I do it in camera raw and so far I've had no issues um, however this is a really really good thing to have if you don't know how to set your white balance in camera raw I also have a little reflector which sometimes can be helpful when it's really low light just don't spook the dog with it <laughs> make sure you open it carefully yeah. Um, I try to travel quite light when I do pet photography, so I only take the stuff that I actually need. So I wouldn't take all of my lenses with me. Um, therefore, I have just a 24 millimeter here, just in case, and my camera. So um, 
This is a Sony 7R3 and a Sony 135mm 1.8 G Master. When I just started, um, I had the 50mm 1.8, but like, it's, not, it's not an amazing lens. <laughs> it's good to start with, but then um, you kind of want to upgrade. And because I was doing mainly portrait, I did get um, a Sigma 105mm, which is a great lens. However, it was really slow and it was really winding me out because I couldn't do action and portrait. Therefore, I did actually buy a Sony 70 by 200 2.8 G Master, which I did like. However, again, <laughs> the 2.8 aperture for me wasn't enough. So finally, I've upgraded to the 135 millimeter, which is uh, a nice and low aperture of 1.8, is really sharp, is really fast, and I literally don't have to ever change my lens unless I want to do some landscape photography and I need to use a wide angle. So this is my camera that I use today. When I started photography back in the day, <laughs> like 10 years ago, um, I um, used to have a Sony Alpha 65 uh, with just a 50 mil lens, like the cheapest you can get from Sony. Um, afterwards, I'd upgraded to a Sony Alpha 7R2 with a 35 mil lens from Zeiss, if I pronounced that correctly, which is a great lens and a great camera. However, I kind of stopped doing photography, so I sold it, only to then for lockdown to happen a year later and me buying the gear back again. But because I was just still morally not recovered from the fact that I just sold my full frame camera, I got a Sony Alpha 65000 um, and I got again a 50 mil lens. When I was buying the lenses, I wasn't buying the ASPC sensor or whatever, I can't remember <laughs> the technicalities. So I wasn't buying for the crop sensor, I was buying full frame lenses because the mount is the same. And knowing me <laughs> and knowing the fact that I've already gone through like four cameras, I knew that eventually I will be buying a full frame camera. So I didn't want to waste my money and time buying crop lenses to only then having to buy again um, full frame lenses. And that's, I think, really great from Sony to have the same mount. So you can really make the choice whether you want to have the crop lens or whether you want to compromise that um, um, focal length a bit and have a um, full frame le uh, lens for yourself and then potentially upgrade to a full frame camera anyway. To anyone <laughs> starting pet photography, I would say invest in good gear rather than, like me, <laughs> go through 10 different items to then only go back um, to the original thing that you wanted. So um, if you do pet photography, obviously it's up to you. If you want a zoom, have a zoom lens. But for me, I would definitely recommend the 135mm 1.8 because it gives you amazing dreamy uh, blurry backgrounds as well as is super fast and sharp if you want to do uh, some action photography running dogs or agility or whatever so the reason why I am generally with Sony is because ever since the a65 uh, was bought and the mirrorless system <laughs> was uh, tasted I don't think I'd ever go back to a DSLR again um, the reason why I went with Sony um, a7R3 is because it is an upgrade for me from A7R2. It's got a great ISO handling. Um, it's got animal eye focus, which is really important for pet photography. So hence, I didn't buy the 7R2, which potentially could have been cheaper, but also I couldn't really afford the 7R4. So I was uh, settled on this because it was giving me all the features that I need to do pet photography. So it's, uh, it's fairly fast, like for me. I know the uh, a7 IX obviously <laughs> is a lot faster, but um, uh, 11 frames per second is just fine with me. And the animal, animal eye focus is the main thing that made me go for this camera. So this is where I am now, unless Sony releases something a lot better <laughs> and maybe I'll, I'll swap. But for now, I'm quite happy with what I have. Let me just, so um, I am just cleaning up um, the moss a little bit because I don't want any distractions in the photo from the dog and from the moss essentially. 
and it is really really annoying to remove it in photoshop it's doable but why waste half an hour <laughs> if you can waste five minutes and quickly clear it up because i want for the dog to lay down just here with his head here you can see like the texture of the moss is really really nice um, and i'll be taking a shot of him with the light technically falling from there so you'll be like a backlit shot with a nice little uh, like a frame if you like on the fair light um, of, of light on a day like this which is quite cloudy i would be looking for spots of light like this so there is one here there is one there there is one there <laughs> there is one there because the dog is quite big this is the best spot for him to lay down and for me to have enough space to walk from here to about there to get a bit of foreground potentially of him lying down if it's a really sunny day then i would actually be doing the opposite i'd be looking for shadow rather than um, spots like that because if it's really harsh sunlight falling down it'd be quite hard to edit as well as um, the fur becomes really shiny and white and it's really annoying to edit so um, um, on a sunny day I'd probably be somewhere there <laughs> on a cloudy day um, I look for just spotted light in fact for editing is even better because technically you already get a darker background than your subject and it's a lot easier to um, accentuate your subject, if that makes sense, and play around with the dodge and burn in Photoshop. <laughs> Come here, boy. Lie down. Good boy. Stay. Jagger, wait. Jagger, stay. Right, because it's a 135 millimeter, I do have to be quite far away from the subject to be able to shoot the shot. Check a look. Good boy. <laughs> okay, sit. Yes, good boy. Check a Do you want a treat? Stay. Jog a boy. Where's your treat? Where's your bully? Okay, <laughs> good boy. So normally I would ask uh, the owner what's their favorite word or treat or food or whatever to try and um, get their attention. But quite often that actually excites the dog so they want to move. So normally the owner would have the dog on the lead unless they're really well behaved. Just standing like this at a distance and I'd be taking the shot whilst the owner holds the dog and I say something really exciting for them to kind of look at me, kind of want to come to me, but they can't because obviously the lead is holding them. And therefore they stay in the spot that I want them to be, as well as engage with me without being able to move away <laughs> from the spot. Um, it is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> He's really well trained, so he knows exactly what he needs to do. If I ask him to lie down, it basically means head down. Uh, if I ask him to sit, he sits. Um, However, if, if your dog is not very well trained, it might take you a few tries. And if you see that he's, he's moving every time, just stick a lead on them, hold them like this, so that there is enough space for you to then be removed in Photoshop and take your shots. Um, lead is your best friend, <laughs> I would say. Uh, thin, um, perhaps not too colorful, so like a black, thin lead is the best option uh, for you to have because it's easier to remove if you get a thick lead like that or red or whatever it might be a bit harder for you to remove in photoshop afterwards so i am looking for a uh, foreground uh, just to frame the photo a little bit and make it something a bit different um, and your foreground could be anything. You could just go really low on the ground and get a bit of foreground. You could get nice framing with um, grass, uh, with fern, with even moss, trees, whatever you like, 
to make your shot a little bit more interesting and give it a bit more of a mood setting. So um, here specifically we have a bit of fern, I think a bit of brambles. Um, it is a little bit messy, so I would say, <laughs> let me have a look. <laughs> I would say that spot there, I would place a dog and take a photo from Yeah, from just here. I start by looking at something eye-pleasing, not too distracting, something that I don't need to spend a lot of time editing. <laughs> and then I point my camera, just firstly, put the settings right, so the exposure and everything, and um, to know how far I need to be from the dog once I've placed the dog there, um, so that I don't then spend 10 minutes trying to find the right angle. So I kind of just find the angle before the dogs goes in. And once I found the angle, just like that, I ask for Jagger to go in. Come on, Jagger, get in, come, come here. Yes, good boy, come. Come, 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 stop, stay. My settings at the moment for this shot, um, f1.8 because I like compressed background and um, depth of field. Um, one, one sixty of a second because it's a still shot. I'm not shooting um, any action. So I want to reduce the amount of noise in the photo as much as I can by uh, <laughs> keeping my ISO hopefully below a thousand <laughs> but the camera is full frame so you would handle ISO 6000 if I wanted to it's just again it would be more noisy you don't want that so my ISO is 800 Jagger wait stay good puppy if he's not looking if he's not going to start looking at me stay Do you wanna go for a, a walk? A walk? Good boy, yes. Uh, <laughs> so I just talk to him, anything that he knows and he really likes, i.e. going for a walk, food, treats. Uh, I make silly noises if he doesn't look. And because he's quite thick fed, he does pant a lot. And although it's fine to have a dog panting in a photo, if you're trying to set the mood a bit of something a bit more mysterious, I don't know, like serious <laughs> and serious, you want them to close their mouth. So sometimes I have to hang around and wait for him to lick his lips <laughs> to then when he shuts his mouth, that's when I take like a multi, I don't know, four or five shots in hope that at least one is with his mouth shut. Uh, alternatively, I sometimes could chuck a treat as long as I know that the dog is not going to move. Uh, I'd chuck a treat or something or a toy and ask him to wait. Normally that makes them really concentrated on the item. They close their mouth and they stop panting. So um, you have to be patient if you do want the dog to close their mouth. Um, silly noises sometimes work, but I think he's immune to them. <laughs> if it's a new dog or a client dog, they will uh, pay more attention. But for him now, it's just white noise. <laughs> he doesn't care anymore. I normally go back in and have a look. Here we go, mouth shut, all done. <laughs> I, I always, always, always zoom in on the eye to make sure that it is in focus. Not the snoot, not the ear, not the leaf or whatever. Just make sure the eyes are in focus. Um, like here, for example, snoot in focus, eyes, zoom in on them and you can see they're not in focus. So this photo, basically delete. Here we go, eyes are in focus. And this is exactly what I was looking for when I was saying, let me just get rid of this, about foreground. So you get nice framing either side. This little stick is really annoying, but it's so easily removed in Photoshop. Um, so that's what 
when I look for bushes or trees with big dogs, I want to make sure that it is tall enough to give him a nice frame. So um, I always, always revise the photos. You don't want to just take a um, hundred photos or a whole photo shoot without checking what you're doing because you might come home and be really disappointed that every single photo is out of focus. You'd be really, really upset with yourself. <laughs> so always check what you're doing uh, just to tweak your comp um, exposure. If, for example, it's a bit too dark, a bit too light or whatever. Uh, with dark dogs, it's quite tricky because you don't want to overexpose too much um, because your surroundings then will be too bright and you're potentially burning information, just pixels, especially if it's a sunlight uh, kind of day. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to underexpose too much because when you try to then rescue it in Photoshop, uh, you might get a lot of noise. So with black dogs specifically, I always uh, tend to find uh, light spots just like that and make sure that the surrounding area is fairly dark as well so that it's roughly the same exposure for him and for the background. In a setting like this with a white dog, to be fair, it's a lot easier than a dark dog <laughs> because it, although it is cloudy, you're allowed to underexpose a little bit more than with a black dog. Um, I'm not saying underexpose, expose it properly so <laughs> you don't have to then uh, spend time in Photoshop but um, I would say the most challenging dogs are black dogs and like white dogs. Um, firstly, colour cast on their fur, so with a white dog you'll have all this greenery reflecting in the fur that then you'll have to um, remove in Photoshop because the dog is not green, it's white. Um, with him you have uh, brown patches, white patches, all this fluff uh, that is actually brown is not grey so it is quite difficult to balance it to make sure the dog doesn't look black and white but at the same time it hasn't got all the weird uh, like magenta colour cast on it. I'm just trying to uh, position him and reward him in the position that I want him to be in. And then when I walk away, hopefully that'll show him that that's where he needs to be. Right, Jagger, back. Good boy, come. Yes, yes, good boy. Okay, you, you, you stay now. Stay, stay. Wait, wait, stay. Good boy. Stay, Jagger. Gorgeous. And you got your feet cropped. See, perfect example where you think he looks grey, but then that little stump is covering his feet and makes it look cropped. It really annoys me, so I'm going to have to reposition him. <laughs> Try an error. Come on, forward, forward. Yes, yes. Stay. So now I'm just taking a quick picture of him with a nice frame either side. A stump and the tree on one side. Most of the photos I take, I do take from a low angle just to be on the same level with the dog. It's just a bit more of an impact on the picture. Look at me. Oh, good boy. Yeah. Good puppy. Ja ja. In this case, because uh, the ground is a little bit higher, so I'm not like exactly on the floor, otherwise I'm just getting too much mess in the shot. Um, and the dog is quite tall, so I don't need to go exactly on the floor. I look for a nice frame, so in front of me I have a tree on one side, a little stump on the other, and we have just like a little like U-shape um, dip in the ground. And I focus on the eye. Um, on f1.8, it is really important that it is on the eye because otherwise, as I say, you might have just uh, an eyebrow in focus, nose, ear, a leaf, whatever. So just make sure you're always prioritizing the dog's eyes. Uh, eight times out of 10, I use aperture 1.8 or 1.4 if my lens has a 1.4, because I always like that background compression between the subject and the background, and then obviously the foreground. It gives it like nice creaminess. 
Um, sometimes I do want some of the background to be showcased in the photo. So I would um, go to F2, F2.8, depending on the light, because you always want to make sure that your exposure is your priority. <laughs> so um, if I do 2.8, um, I make sure that I higher up the ISO or lower down the shutter speed. Um, and um, those kind of photos would be like landscape type photos or uh, urban photography. So something that you want to showcase other than the dog, I would say. Yes, good boy, here. So here, I really want him to put his paws on here, but he is clearly very comfortable in that little spot and he doesn't want to move. Therefore, I'm going to grab a treat and see if I can lure him out. Jagger, out, come here boy. Lie down, down. Yes, that's it, good boy. So what I'm going to do now is stay. Clean my hand. <laughs> Clean a bit more. Jugger, stay. No, jug star. Sometimes I have to help him. Okay, stand up. Right, this tree I think is too small. So I'm gonna do something like this. It's also very good of him just standing on the stump. And that tree is annoying. So there is nice frame in there without too many distractions. So I'll probably choose that angle to avoid all of these distractions annoying things <laughs> um, and ask him to just stand like this because I don't want to stress him out he clearly is trying his best to what I'm asking but he's too big for the stump hence why smaller dogs are easier <laughs> and therefore I'm not going to torture him I haven't got any treats left so I'm just going to ask him to stand here and just take a quick picture and see how it goes it might it might not work out but we shall see. Stay, Jagger. Good puppy. You are so handsome. Oh my goodness, Jagger. You're so handsome. When you're posing them, you're kind of helping your idea come to life. So if you want a specific mood in the photo, you would want ideally the dog to pose how you want so whether he's lying down standing up running around so whatever emotion you're trying to catch jagger is like quite wolfy looking so he generally looks quite good um looking a bit scary if you like <laughs> in the woodlands standing on things and looking very proud like lion king with his mane so i do uh, quite like that and normally try and pose to enhance his looks um, in this particular spot, I think it's just nice for variety because you don't want a whole photo shoot of a dog lying down or a dog sitting up. So you, you perhaps ask them to lay down a few times, then you'd ask them to stand up. Okay, Jagger, come. And then, <laughs> and then you'd ask them um, um, to just sit. Or if your dog knows lots of tricks, for example, like hugging trees or hugging or holding things, you can also do that. Um, depending on what your preference is. All dogs are different. If your dog uh, doesn't know too many tricks, that's absolutely fine because the good thing is about pet photography so you also get to train your dog um, and therefore you're providing mental en enrichment to the dog, you're bonding with your dog and you're getting amazing shots out of it. Let's go. So now we're out of the woodlands and uh, we're going to try and do some action photography. The reason why I have a stick on me is because uh, I'd like him to jump over a stick and get a few flying shots, um, like the textbook flying dog, dog over a log. Um, the reason why I didn't do it in the woods is because it's just too dark 
and for action photography you'd like to have a shutter speed of at least uh, one thousandth of a second or one two fifty of a second and so this path seems pretty well lit it's not a great um, day in terms of um, visibility but I think I think I think we will get something <laughs> so I'm going to just place a stick here um, the reason why I place it here not down the road is because you have a bit of like grass either side which means the dog is not going to try and wiggle around the stick either side and cheat so hopefully he's just gonna try and jump over right right above it i can't guarantee it it's, it's, it's not like a huge jump but it just makes it a bit more interesting so um yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes <laughs> first of all you go into your drive mode and you set your um continuous shooting to high plus so the faster the better um, then you go into focus mode you need a continuous af so it's, a, it's continuously focusing um, after this you'd go into shutter speed and set it to one uh, one two fifty or one one thousand i mean one one thousand is risky so one two fifty is better f 1.8 uh, because we want as much light as possible is a quite cloudy day and um, ISO today 1 600 uh, however you can set it onto automatic but just be aware that the camera might put it to like 6000 and you might be dealing with um, a lot of noise before I even put the dog there I want to make sure I am ready to go so that he doesn't get fed up and then ignore me and like walk away. He's eating grass actually. <laughs> He's already fed up <laughs> before we even started. But yeah, I'm gonna now go um, roughly almost to the top of the of the path, um, set him up, and then lie down on the floor probably, and um, call him up and hopefully, hopefully get one photo focus. <laughs> um, Jagger, come on, Jagger, come on, come on. Come here. Here. Stay. Jug. You stay, Jagger. So what I'm doing here now, just quickly, before I call the dog, is I focus on the log, on my little stick, just to make sure that it is enough um, focal length between, <laughs> between the focus point um, and, and the lens, and it's not actually blurry, because it's a 135 millimeter. You want to make sure that you're not too close. Um, to your subject uh, when he's going to be jumping out because the camera won't focus. Focus area, expandable, flexible spot with animal AF because I personally feel that you have more successful shots. Stop! <laughs> more successful shots with this mode rather than just the small uh, focus area. Um, and then I call the dog Jagger! Yes, good boy. Let's have a look. There you go, in focus. I'm shocked myself. <laughs> but yeah, so here we go. A nice little picture of Jagger flying over the log. And because I focused on the eye, come on, zoom in. I don't know if you can see, but it's super sharp. It looks dark, but it's not. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Jagger, do you want some water? Do you want it? So, because we're now towards the end of our shoot, I want to make sure that he's not too hot. Jagger, do you want it? Get it! He's worked really hard, but he clearly doesn't want any, so that's fine. Yeah, you want to make sure that your dog is happy throughout the whole photo shoot, that you're not really stressing them out. Like if you see that they're too hot or um, like they're panting too much or whatever, give them some water. Um, if you're asking the dog something and he genuinely can't understand what you want from them, I would recommend just stop asking because you're gonna stress them out. Um, instead, just have a five minutes 
just let them be, whatever, and then try again and lure them with a treat rather than keep asking, like, sit, 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 sit. If he doesn't understand to sit, just lure them. Jago, come here. Sit. With a treat normally like this to their nose and they'll sit and reward them and say yes and then hopefully um, they'll understand. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't overstress your dog just to get a cute photo for Instagram. <laughs> uh, just make sure that you look after them because the happier your dog is, the better your pictures will be because they'll just do what you want uh, rather than being stressed, trying to understand what you want. Cha -cha. Look. So uh, we are now at the end of our um, session and I'd like um, just to give a few tips to anybody who'd like perhaps to start photography uh, of their pets. So first and foremost, get yourself a good camera. I know it is a hobby, but although you can take great pictures with any kit, I would recommend just to get a good camera straight away because it'll be your advantage, uh, which means um, it help you in post-processing as well. Uh, tip number two, just get to know your own dog. So uh, if you are doing <laughs> photos of your own dog, I would imagine, or cat or horse or whatever, um, just um, learn their character, see what they can and can't do, and work on whatever you want them to do at home rather than on a session, stressing them out. Um, just look after them, reward them heavily whenever they do anything for you, even if it's small, because it means that next time, they'll be more likely to listen to you uh, rather than just wander off and be just frustrated altogether. Um, the most important thing is your composition and getting on eye level with your dog uh, because composition is key. I know that there is debate about that. However, um, th there is a, a reason why there is a rule of thirds uh, or golden middle or whatever. Jagger, come here, here. Um, because it makes the images more striking, eye-pleasing, etc. and so on. Um, and get the pet's eyes in focus. Whatever pet you're shooting, get eyes in focus because it's, it's really, really important, uh, especially if you do want to start getting any sort of paid shoots, your photos technically before they even artistically correct, uh, they should be just spot on. So get the composition right, get your... Um, eyes in focus and get your camera settings uh, spot on before um, you start kind of experimenting with breaking the rules. <laughs> so get to know the rules before you break them. Uh, me and Jagger want to thank everyone for watching this video. Hope that y y you found it helpful. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Wex and Sony for arranging uh, this um, how-to session. And if you have any photographs that you'd like to share following this video and if you found it helpful uh, hashtag wex how to uh, on your socials uh, for a chance to be featured if you would like to see um, a bit more of my work um, head over to my instagram which is tatiana pet photography um, and um, you can also check it out on my website which is just tatiana photography uh, jagger is getting really really restless now it's been a couple of hours of work for him i better i better give him some dinner tonight <laughs> and therefore i think uh, it'll be a good time to wrap um thanks for watching <laughs>